Welcome back. We are continuing uh, chapter 13 on gravity. Last week we talked about the force of gravity, the gravitational field, how to find the gravitational field. So today I want to do uh, potential energy associated with gravity and some satellite motion as well, uh, the, the physics of satellite motion. So let's start with potential energy. So this is going to be similar to what we did in chapter 25 with uh, electric potential. This time we're doing gravitational potential energy. So uh, the definition of gravitational potential energy, U2 minus U1, is equal to negative integral the force of gravity dotted into dr. So just like we did with electrical potential, we define delta U, the change in potential energy, as the integral, negative integral, F dotted into dr. If you remember from physics one, where uh, I believe it was chapter eight, we defined conservative forces. We said a conservative force is such that it's equal to minus the gradient of a potential energy function. So this is a, we're, uh, what we're doing today is basically the application of that. So we're saying uh, this is the gradient of a potential, so minus partial u partial x. So basically, if you multiply that, f conservative times uh, dx, if, if we're doing it just in one dimension, then integrate that. And you get basically f delta x is equal to uh, u, u1 minus u2, which is negative the change of potential energy. So in physics 1, we were doing uh, general forces, any force. And we were applying that to specifically to mechanical forces. And then here we're applying that to gravitational force. So let's see what the potential energy of a single planet just like we did for a single charge. So we would use, uh, let's say here we have a planet, and we want to know what is the potential energy of a single planet at a certain point. Uh, so then we would integrate from that point to infinity, one to infinity. So it would be u of infinity minus u of one, integral minus r to infinity, so where r is my distance from my center to that point one. So r is that distance, and then the infinity is my outer infinity. So the force of gravity would be negative g m one m two over r squared. And the integral of that would give you g m1 m2. The integral of 1 over r squared is uh, negative 1 over r from r to infinity. And you have u of infinity minus u of 1. And then if you integrate that, <coughs> this one is going to be negative 1 over infinity, which is 0. And you're left with just g m1 m2 over r. And uh, very, very similar to potential, uh, electrical, uh, electrical potential. So then we say that the potential energy at infinity, that's going to be our reference frame. The potential energy at infinity is going to be zero because then the, any two planets that are infinitely separated any two objects that are infinitely separated are no longer in any gravitational contact with each other. So the potential energy at infinity is going to be zero, and therefore the potential energy at any particular point is going to be negative of this thing. So u sub r is going to be negative g m1 m2 over r. <coughs> so the gravitational potential energy is always negative because gravity is always attractive. So it's negative g m1 m2 over r, and it is a scalar. So let's cancel, erase these 
is here. And it's in units of uh, joules. So it resembles the equation for the force of gravity, F of R, which is negative G M1 M2 over R squared uh, R hat. So the only difference is that uh, instead of the, the R squared, you have an R, and it is also a scalar, so there is no R hat. Uh, so basically, the you can see here that the, the smaller the R, the bigger the, the, the bigger number, the magnitude of the potential energy gets bigger and bigger. So if we plot here, let's say you have two objects. Here's M1, here is uh, M2, and the distance between them is R. The closest that they can get to each other is the sum of their radii, right? So the distance between here is going to be of radius of M1 plus radius of M2. Or we could write it radius of 1 plus radius of 2. Uh, radius of 1 plus radius of 2. So that's the closest that the two planets can get to each other is the sum of their radii. So at that point, when little r is equal to the r1 plus r2, What's the potential energy? Okay. Uh, therefore, the potential energy is equal to negative g m1 m2 over r1 plus r2. Okay. Now, the farther they get apart, the bigger the number that the r becomes, and this number starts approaching infinity. So as they get farther away, the potential energy is increasing and becoming less of a negative number until it asymptotically reaches zero. So objects left to themselves, if, if I start out way out here, they're going to want to approach each other because they want to approach, they want to always reach a more negative potential energy. Okay? And then when they hit each other, that's the the most minimum potential energy that we can get. So the next thing we can also talk about is if this was, uh, if somehow this one was able to go inside of the planet, what would happen? What's the potential energy that it would have? Or let's say instead of a second planet, let's say this was a person. Let's say it was a person. So this time the distance between them since the person is so small compared to the planet, the distance between them is just the, the closest that the person can get is the same as the radius of the planet. Radius of one, uh, planet one. And then once they get inside, then they get inside of the planet, we want to see what happens then. What is the potential energy? Until way they go, until way, uh, they go to the center of the planet. So we should, notice that either the potential energy is going to stay the same, in some cases it might stay the same, or the potential energy might start uh, increasing again, and then until reaching zero, or it might, it might uh, uh, either stay the same, increase, or decrease, one of these three options, depending on what happens. So does it ever go to zero? Does it stay the same or does it go down? So let's look here. 